Do all you can with what you have in the time you have in the place you are. Do all you can. I can't think of a more beautiful and simple definition of what I am dedicating my life to at this moment, which is a vision of what I call sacred activism. But I'm not going to define sacred activism for you. I'm going to tell you three stories. Three stories from the depths of my life. Three stories about three experiences that changed my life and made me crazy enough to take planes in the middle of the night so I can come and speak to people like you. One of the things I love about deep friendship is that you come to hear the stories of the people you love, stories about what really shifted them. So since I have 20 minutes with you, I want to share, as your friend, three very intimate stories so that you will know why I do what I do and care in the way I care. And so that you remember the stories in your life that really have shifted you. In 1989, I was invited by Elle magazine to go to Oslo to interview the Dalai Lama on the day that he won the Nobel Prize. And I think of all the marvelous things that have happened to me in my life, being alone with him for two hours in a small white room in this Norwegian hotel on the day, this epochal day, when he was going to be awarded the highest honor in the human race, was perhaps my happiest and most extraordinary day. I had met His Holiness before, but on that day, we sat for two hours in this room and talked about everything, talked about Tibet, talked about violence, talked about the environment, talked about the enormous world crisis that even then he saw quite clearly was going to get worse and going to challenge human life and human extinction. And I'll never forget one moment in the conversation when he leant across and he said, People must understand that we are not in a crisis. We are in an emergency. At the end of the two hours, he got up and he said, I'm so sorry, but I have to go and get the Nobel Prize now, so we really must stop talking. <laughs> So I looked into his eyes, these amazing eyes of this amazing man, absolutely amazing man. To be in a room with him is so extraordinary because of his incredible humility and tenderness and attention to you. You feel magical. You feel powerful. You feel that this wonderful being is giving him total attention to you. So I got up, he got up, and I gazed into his eyes, and I plucked up my courage, and I said to him, I'll never be alone with you like this, and especially not on an amazing day like this. So, your holiness, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> His Holiness, who has one of the more famous laughs in the world, just flung his head back and roared this beautiful, multifoliate and polyphonic laugh that went up and down every known register. And the walls seemed to shake with his laugh, and then suddenly... 
He brought himself into himself and he became immensely concentrated like a laser beam. And he seemed to shake with divine power. And he looked at me very, very seriously. And he pointed at me. And he gazed deep into my eyes and he said, The point of life is to embody the transcendent. And as he brought his hand down, I felt this flame of power go up and down my body. And I knew beyond thought, beyond words, that what I'd been given was not simply the key to life, but I was being given to that key by somebody who knew the truth of it and who was living it and who had found out that the deepest source of the deepest happiness comes not from connecting with divine love, not just from feeling divine peace, not just from having a few mystical experiences in between gambling on the stock market, but actually plunging into a life of transformation and coming to that miraculous moment when he knew that the Buddha of compassion was living in him and using his arms and his legs and his eyes and every thought to really reach out to all human beings everywhere to bless all human beings at all moments and all sentient beings at all moments forever and ever because he had come to the moment through the divine grace when he was embodying compassion, being love in a body. Even an Englishman couldn't talk at that moment. (laughs) And he saw that I was completely overwhelmed by the majesty and the beauty of the moment. And he said, you know what we're going to do? I said, no. (laughs) He said, you and I are going to take five very quiet minutes and we're going to walk from where I'm sitting now, you're standing now, to the end of the room. It actually was about 30 yards. It was a very small little room, but it had a long corridor. So he took my hand and he looked at me And he and I walked very slowly to the door. And then in the door, he let go of my hand. And he said very tenderly, he said, Goodbye, my dearest friend. And I have met him twice. But I knew he wasn't making things up. He was speaking out of unconditional love. And on the day that he was going to get the Nobel Prize, he didn't go back into the room. He stood by the door, and I could see him as I walked down that vast hotel corridor, just standing there, radiating, radiating love towards me. So not only had he told me the secret of life, he showed me by what he did and how he did it, what it means to be somebody who lives divine love. That was a huge clue to me 